Now, there's a group of people out there today claiming that they don't believe in any of the teachings of Muhammad, but they believe in the Quran. <laughs> That's kind of funny because the Quran is coming from Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa It's from his mouth. It's from his lips. Peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet they're denying the message by denying the messenger. And they say they don't believe in hadith. They don't believe in the stories. They don't believe in the narrations coming from Muhammad. They just don't accept the Quran only. But yet they don't realize that Muhammad, peace be upon him, never wrote down a single word. What he did, he taught his companions, the trusted, respected, and honorable, noble companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, memorized the entire Quran in their hearts and minds, and then they preserved it and passed it down. And then those people passed it down again, and generation upon generation, and all the way down to us today, and we have people today that can trace back their oration of the Quran all the way back to Prophet Muhammad's lips, peace be upon him. And yet, somebody would say, I'll accept that, but I won't accept any of the other teachings that came along with it, the explanation of the Quran, the explanation of Islam. How could somebody do that? <laughs> Just the other day, I received an email, somebody telling me about a group, and I know all about this group, saying that they don't take any hadith. They don't accept anything. Well, I got news for you. They also don't accept the Quran either because they changed that. They pulled out verses of it. They only read it in English anyway. They don't even know the Arabic behind it. But when people start doing things like this, this is the worst kind of deviation because they claim to be Muslim and they're with Muslims. We think they're Muslims, but then they have this sickness inside of themselves, this deviation calling away from the real right path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I want to remind myself of, and you too, is the importance of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because as Allah said in the Quran, obey Allah and obey the messenger. And I obey Allah by following the Quran. What's in the Quran? Yes, we know that. But how can I understand the Quran? How can I understand Islam if I don't know anything about Prophet Muhammad? Peace be upon him. Hmm? Okay. Give you an example. How do I know how to pray? Do Muslims pray every day? Yeah, five times a day. Okay, great. But where do I put my hands when I pray? Which direction do I face? How do I know? Because I'm on the other side of the earth uh, and I want to know this and that. How can I calculate some of the timings, for instance, exactly when I should pray and not pray? What if I live at the North Pole? What, it, what does it tell me in, his, in the Quran about that? But the Prophet, peace be upon him, explained even if you're in a place where the night is so, so long and the day is so, so long, he even said then how to calculate it. How will you know if you don't know anything about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? You wouldn't know even when to pray. In fact, you wouldn't really know how to totally make the proper wudu or the washing if you don't know about Muhammad, peace be upon him. And what about fasting? When is it exactly that we are supposed to start fasting. And what Allah tells us in the Quran, in our first days when we were reading it from the Quran, we heard about that believers have been ordered to fast, and we start fasting, we give up the eating and drinking and so on, just when we're able to make the difference between the white thread of the day and the black thread of the night. Now, one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, after reading this, reciting this from the Quran, went home and got a black thread and a white thread and he put it there and then he watched. When the sun had come all the way up, I mean the sun was up bright, finally he could see it. But by then everybody was already fasting for quite a while. Whoops. So when he asked Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he said, no, 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 no. It's not about that. It's not about a string. It's not about some kind of, you know, thread like from your clothes. It's talking about the white thread of day against the black thread of night, as I explained just a minute ago. But that's not what it says. Literally in the Quran, you have to know what the Prophet said about it. And what about Hajj? And what about Zakat? And how do you calculate the Zakat? And how do you know the rituals of Hajj if you don't know about the Sunnah or the Hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? For sure, if you want to obey Allah, you have to obey his messenger. 
And how can you do that if you reject the very teachings of the messenger? Very dangerous thing, actually, and a good reminder for us to remind others during this holy month of Ramadan.